Moscow. Are we any closer to finding out what really happened in this poisoning? Well, I doubt if it's going to be resolved any time soon, but what we should now be seeing is if these two people are um, Russians, then on the internet, lots of people in Russia should be um, writing up that they know these people, they've seen them, uh, they, where they live. So unless stuff starts to appear on the internet soon that identifies these two people and confirms it, it will, I think, make a real question mark over whether these two are actually Russian agents. Yeah, I mean, we, we haven't been presented uh, with any facts, any evidence as to, to back up the claims by the UK. It doesn't mean they're not true, but there's nothing to back them up. One would have thought at this point we have these two photographs identifying these men, as you said, would be the most important thing. If that's the case, why is the UK refusing to hand over such evidence that they have, such as fingerprints? Because surely that would then put all the pressure on Russia to identify these men. I think it certainly is the case that the, the failure to cooperate with the Russians after the Russian government offered to do this raises a big question mark about, is this all true? All my life, governments all around the world have killed people. I was a young man when the British government authorised the assassination of the Prime Minister of uh, what was uh, then Central African Republic, um, Patrice Lumumba. And so governments do terrible things. But what struck me over the last couple of years, there seems to have been a ratcheting up of anti-Russian sentiment, almost like trying to recreate a Cold War. Um, no one in Britain has ever told the truth about Crimea. I, no one is told that 90% of the people living in Crimea are Russian. They want to be part of Russia. We're just always told it's you know, uh, an aggressive invasion and things like that. So the eagerness with which Theresa May, our Prime Minister, virtually from the moment this incident happened, was blaming Russia and blaming Russia when there wasn't a shred of evidence then, and there's very little now. I don't, I mean, I just, I can recall my life, we've been lied to by governments, I mean, Labour and Conservative, so I'll wait till I see some truth. It's, um, it's an argument now that, that seems to be the first one in the playbook for governments around the world. When you make a serious claim, you say we have the evidence, but we can't show it to you for security reasons or whatever. Why don't the UK just make this really simple? Put all of their evidence on the table, let everybody in the world see it, then put Russia in a difficult position. Why not just do that? Well, I think that's what causes me to question whether this is I mean, what their government is saying is true. I, Given that Russia has said it will cooperate, it will share evidence, it will assist in all of this, to actually refuse to do that, to continue to keep everything hidden, suggests there might be a hidden agenda here as part of the broad anti-Russian campaign being largely led, one has to say, by the British government. Um, we heard Nikki Haley say it, that uh, Russia continues to just, it's their playbook, to deny any accusations. But the UK themselves aren't helping themselves here by not putting forward evidence. So we've got this he, share, he said, she said, you know, argument, counter-argument situation once again. How do we move forward? Well, I think the only way to move forward is to open all this up. I mean, it's taken quite a considerable time for any police report to finally get out. And I, the point I made at the beginning, if these two people are clearly Russian agents, then all over the internet by now, we should have people going on and saying, yes, I know them, they live around the corner or whatever. And I'm not aware anything like that has happened. And that does, I think, undermine the claims. Um, I, I don't know whether you can answer this or not, but I'm just interested. Uh, how do you feel the sentiment is uh, among the public over in the UK? I mean, the, I think the press have pretty much sided with the government. Maybe you can um, counteract that. But what's your, what's your feeling over there? I didn't catch that, I'm afraid. It's starting to rain quite heavily. Well, what was the question again? Just, just very briefly, I just wondered what the sentiment was there among the UK public of what's happening here. Oh, I mean, basically the British public are sick and tired of our getting into conflicts. We've still not recovered from the consequences of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, overthrowing uh, the, prime, uh, the governor, uh, government in Libya. I don't think anyone wants to see a ratcheting up of this stuff. If we're having sanctions against Russia, it damages the British economy. And therefore, I think the vast majority of people are looking at this, but they're not particularly enthused by the position the government is taking. Many thanks, Ken. Appreciate your time. Ken Livingstone, former mayor of London, is my guest Thank this you. hour.
Okay, we're going to take a very short break. Do stay with us.